بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے ویل فیس دا ٹاپک آف میل جینیٹل ڈپس وی آر ڈسکسنگ دا میل ریپروڈکٹری سسٹم وی ہیو آلریڈی ڈسکسڈ دا ہسٹالوجی آف گونیٹس ٹیسٹ از ان کیس آف میل نو وی پاس آن ٹو نیکسٹ سیگمنٹ آف دا میل ریپروڈکٹری سسٹم دیٹ از دا میل جینیٹل ڈکٹ سو سم جنرل پوائنٹس بفور وی گو ٹو دا ڈیٹیلس اٹس ویری امپارٹنٹ ٹو نو سب جنرل پوائنٹس وچ فیسلیٹیٹ یو ان انڈرسٹینڈنگ اینڈ ریمبرنگ دا ہسٹالوجی آف میل جینیٹل ڈکٹس سو دا فنکشنس فرسٹ وی ہیو ٹو ٹیک اینڈ یو کین سی دیٹ تھری پرنسپل فنکشنس آف دا میل جینیٹل ڈکٹس اینی ڈکٹ ود سرو ایز main channel so this serve as conveying channels for the uh, security product of the test is now security product of the test is we should uh, know from the knowledge of uh, histology of test is which we just discussed last in, in the last uh, lecture uh, obviously spermatozoa which are produced by the test is but spermatozoa are suspended in a Uh, testicular fluid which is secreted by the sertoli cells spermatozoa are produced from the spermatogenic cells and testicular fluid is secreted by the sertoli cells so quite large amounts copious amounts of testicular fluid which consists mostly of water but some dissolved substances also uh, they leave the testis and uh, as they then after leaving the testis they pass into the genital ducts and now uh, as soon as they enter the genital ducts the testicular fluid is absorbed back or uh, to be precise the water in the testicular fluid is uh, absorbed back into the blood stream purpose is that the street, uh, secretory product should become thick and viscid because finally it will be added to the uh, product of the seminal vesicles and prostate that is the accessory glands of the male reproductive system to form the semen and the semen is thick and viscid so these secretions we uh, need that they should also become thick and viscid so reabsorption of water from the testicular fluid is, is a very important function of these uh, ducts and uh, that is a, a basis of their histology as well Uh, uh, as we will see that they are lined by uh, an epithelium which is designed for the absorption not for the secretion because nothing is being secreted but for the absorption and uh, uh, in the wall of the larger ducts uh, there is smooth muscle smooth muscle begins to appear first in the small quantity and as the duct become larger the amount of smooth muscle in the wall of the genital ducts becomes more and more and thicker and is thickest in the vas deferens the purpose of this smooth muscle is to contract to propel the uh, contents which are present in the lumen of the duct onwards because they are finally to be expelled from the exterior from the body so smooth muscle uh, wherever it is present we know it is for the purpose of producing contractions peristaltic rhythmic smooth contractions this involuntary muscle appears in the wall and then as the ducts become larger the amount of this smooth muscle increases and then which i just mentioned that this are lined by uh, not all of them but mostly they are lined by general general epithelium of the male genital ducts is pseudo stratified columnar and this consists of uh, like any pseudo stratified epithelium columnar cells and basal cells and the tall columnar cells they bear stereocilia if you go back to your knowledge of general histology and remember that stereocilia are uh, unusually long or uh, enormously long uh, uh, microvilli and the purpose of the uh, microvilli and uh, most of the uh, places in the body is to increase the surface area for the purpose of uh, either uh, 
absorption or in some places uh, secretion. But here, the purpose of these microvilli is to uh, increase the surface area for the purpose of reabsorption or absorption. And what is being uh, reabsorbed? That is the water from the testicular fluid, which we have discussed at number two in the functions. If you look uh, in the functions, number two, absorb, they absorb most of the testicular fluid back into the blood stream. So this epithelium you will see in most of the uh, male genital ducts, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium bearing stereocilia at its free surface of the columnar cells. So these uh, male genital ducts are generally categorized into two types of two groups within the testis. Uh, intertesticular ducts and outside the testis, extratesticular ducts. Actually, within the testis, as I will show you a diagram in the next slide, uh, they are uh, just uh, very uh, small and uh, uh, they are very simple in structure also. Uh, they are tubuli recti, which literally means straight tubules. Recti for straight and tubuli for the tubules. Uh, and they are lined by Sertoli cells in their proximal part and simple combined epithelium in their distal part. And tubuli recti are just uh, uh, the continuation of the semiferous tubules. Uh, the semiferous tubules themselves, as we discussed in the structure of testes, they are convoluted and tortuous. But as they pass towards the mediastinum testes, they finally. Uh, become straight or become connected to a straight uh, tubule of same nearly same diameter as the semiferous tubules, and this straight tubule is called tubuli recti. And uh, uh, the reti testis is a network of uh, channels, irregular intercommunicating channels which lie in the mediastinum testis, and uh, they receive the tubuli recti and themselves. The reti testis is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. Reti means network from reticulum. And reti testis, network of testis, they lie in the mediastinum testis. Mediastinum testis is the thickened posterior part of the tunica albuginea, that is a connective tissue covering of the testis. It is thickened posteriorly to form tunica albuginea, uh, the, sorry, the uh, mediastinum testis and within the mediastinum testis are present uh, reti testis which is basically a network of intercommunicating channels lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. Uh, the extra testicular ducts they convey the spermatozoa from the testis to the prostrative urethra ultimately and they are uh, classified into Ductuli afferentes, then duct of epidermis, ductus deferens or vas deferens, and ejaculatory duct. In this diagram, here we see that uh, starting from the, if you look at the semiferous tubules, and then look at this uh, straight tubules, uh, which are receiving the Seminiferous tubules, if you look at the label, the straight tubules, they are the tubuli recti. And tubuli recti are conveying the, uh, the secretive product into reti testis, which is lying in the mediastinum testis. As you can see, reti testis is an irregular network of uh, tubules or spaces lying within the mediastinum testis and from the reti testis then uh, the uh, security product passes into extra testicular ducts. So intertesticular ducts are the straight tubules or tubuli recti and the reti testis and then the extra testicular ducts they here we can see three of uh, uh, them that is the efferent ductules uh, which are issuing from the head of the uh, near the uh, upper pole of the testis passing into the head of the epididymis 
and then the epididymis which is actually the ductus epididymis the highly coiled duct uh, and this duct of epididymis the tail of epididymis passes into the ductus deferens and ductus deferens finally joins the duct of the seminal gland or seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct which is the final part the fourth part of the duct system or male uh, genital duct system uh, but these are the main parts of the <coughs> male genital duct system intertesticular and extratesticular and if you look at the right you will see uh, this is the strand section of testes of an animal maybe mouse or guinea pig and you can see the reti testes and then you can see the uh, head of epididymis and body of epididymis and uh, the reti testes lying in the mediastinum testes which is a thickening of the tunica albuginea, which is connective tissue covering of the testes. And you can see the epididymis in the head and in the body. It is appearing as multiple cut sections, multiple cut profiles. Some of them are crossed sections, some of them are longitudinal sections, some of them are oblique sections because uh, this is a duct of epididymis is a highly coiled duct, as you can see in the diagram on the left. And this uh, uh, due to its highly coiled nature in the section we see uh, it has multiple cut sections in various profiles some of them longitudinal transfers oblique and so on and so forth so it we pass on to uh, the ductuli friend is nothing special not very uh, important uh, as regards the uh, oral so topic but just we have to know that there are 15 to 20 which pass out from the uh, testes from the and they receive the uh, security product from the reti testes emerge from the posterior part of the testes themselves they are also uh, highly convoluted and they enter the head of the epididymis to join the duct of epididymis and they are lined by simple columnar epithelium which has two types of cells non ciliated cells also called principal cells which bear microvilli not stereocilia but microvilli of uh, microvilli are just uh, ordinary microvilli they are not long microvilli uh, to deserve to be called as stereocilia and then there are tall columnar cells uh, uh, which uh, have cilia on them and they are not absorptive in function but they are supposed to help in absorption by stirring the fluid within the lumen of the ductus uh, ductulia frentis uh, and thus uh, help in absorption of this fluid into the uh, principal cells which bear microvilli. So nothing much special about the Tulia apprentice. And then we come to the extra testicular ducts. And it, uh, we begin with the epididymis. Epididymis is a name given to a body which is lying posterior superior to the testis. And actually epididymis, uh, which is a common shaped body, consists of a highly coiled and very complexly convoluted duct which is called ductus epididymis or duct of epididymis and uh, this duct is about uh, 7 meters long you can see how enormous its length is more than 21 feet and uh, it, it accommodate the length it is highly coiled and forms a comma shaped structure which lies post to superior to the testis so it begins in the head of the testis where it receives the Ductuli frentis and, and the tail becomes continuous with the ductus deferens or vas deferens. <coughs> now its uh, section of the epididymis shows, uh, as we have already discussed, numerous cut profiles and special feature of these cut profiles, as we will see in the next slide, is that they uh, show a smooth luminal contour not irregular but smooth uniform luminal 
contour and uh, within the lumen also are present uh, clumps of spermatozoa and the lining epithelium is rose red white columnar epithelium so i have told you that the genital ducts in the majority of the length is lined by the whole of epidermis and then as we will see the ductus deferens uh, the lining epithelium is pseudo stratified columnar so duct, uh, the best example of pseudo stratified columnar epithelium is present in the male genital ducts and also of course in the uh, upper respiratory passages trachea bronchi etc but there it is ciliated here this pseudo stratified epithelium is not ciliated but has stereocilia which are uh, unusually long microvilli and then uh, outer to the epithelium in the epididymis or in the, on the duct of epididymis is present a thin layer of smooth muscle so smooth muscle has started from here as the uh, epididymis has started inductively efferent is uh, there is some connective tissue uh, but smooth muscle is not uh, discernible here the smooth muscle becomes discernible and it has a wall consisting of epithelium and smooth muscle now this is a picture showing on the left low power and on the right high power cut section of the epididymis or ductus epididymis and you can see the multiple profiles cut in different uh, sections uh, in different profiles transfers longitudinal oblique etc and uh, inner you can see the contour of all these profiles cut profiles is smooth as you can see on the diagram on the right shows it clearly which is showing a cross section of the duct of epididymis and this uh, shows the inner luminal is diameter uh, contour is quite smooth and uh, inside there are clumps of spermatozoa and these uh, arrows show the stereocilia present on the free surface of the principal cells or tall columnar cells so the epithelium consists of tall columnar cells which are also called principal cells and basal cells which serve as reserve cells <coughs> or stem cells to produce uh, new cells Uh, for the epithelium which is ever uh, uh, changing uh, and renewing itself old cells are dying new cells are being produced and the basal cells serve as the reserve cells and uh, uh, outer to the the epithelium you can see the smooth muscle is surrounding the ductus epididymis another diagram shows almost the same thing on, but here we have many sections on the left side or most of them are transverse sections and show the smooth inner luminal contour spermatozoa in the lumen clumps of spermatozoa in the lumen and the free surface of the tall columnar cells showing and these uh, uh, stereocilia which are, are uh, present in the form of tufts over these cells on the right side is very clear the principal cells and the basal cells of the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium which is lining the ductus epididymis the tall columnar cells are principal cells bearing tufts of stereocilia and there are basal cells and outer to the, that is the uh, smooth muscle layer so this we have discussed the principal cells bear stereocilia and the functions uh, you can very quickly read them temporary storage and transportation we have discussed it already and uh, reabsorption testicular fluid which we have discussed but in addition to that ph uh, phagocytosis of residual bodies and degenerate spermatozoa residual bodies are the uh, th uh, the part of the 
developing spermatids which is uh, that part of the cytoplasm of the spermatids which is discarded during the process of spermiogenesis that discarded spermat uh, the cytoplasm of the spermatids uh, is known as residual bodies so they pass into the just some of them are absorbed um, uh, phagocytos by the cytoplasm cells themselves but uh, some of them pass into the testicular fluid and then are absorbed by the uh, spermatozoa uh, by the uh, the cells principal cells of the uh, epithelium lining the ductus epididymis uh, similarly some spermatozoa are degenerate die and degenerate during the process of <clears throat> spermatogenesis and they these dead spermatozoa are also phagocytosed by the principal cells of the lining epithelium pseudo stratified lining epithelium of the ductus epididymis a uh, special uh, feature of this uh, these principal cells is that they secrete uh, decapacitation factors which are actually glyco glyco glycolipids which Uh, become stuck or uh, which uh, may pro provide a coating over the head region of the spermatozoa, and thus the spermatozoa are rendered temporarily infertilizable. They cannot fertilize uh, unless they reach the female reproductive system, and there, in the fluid of the female genital ducts. these decapacitation factors are removed that process is known as capacitation and that we will discuss in embryology and also when we discuss the uh, female uh, genital ducts next is the ductus deferens this is the thickest and uh, largest part of the uh, not length lengthwise but i am talking of the its uh, luminal diameter and its wall uh, much thicker than the uh, that of the ductus epididymis though longest is the ductus epididymis 7 meters uh, so in the tail of the epididymis the ductus epididymis becomes continuous with the ductus deferens and what change occurs here that large amount of smooth muscle appears in the wall so the wall of the ductus deferens consists of mucosa muscularis and adventitia now remember most of the uh, the ducts whether they are in the urinary system or in the genital system or uh, some other tubular uh, viscera of the body either they these uh, the tubular viscera consists of three layers or four layers in urogenital system uh, and uh, maybe in some other parts of the body as we will see they usually consist of three layers mucosa muscularis and adventitia or adventitia is partly or completely replaced by serosa so mucosa consists of epithelium and underlying fine connective tissue which is called lamina propria which supports the epithelium <clears throat> but in the just uh, intestinal system in the alimentary system there are four layers they just to tell you that there are some mucosa is also present there is mucosa sub mucosa and uh, muscularis and then adventitia or serosa but here no mucosa sub mucosa is present remember no sub mucosa is present in the urogenital system there are only three layers mucosa then muscularis and then adventitia this is the cut section the distinguishing features identification features of the vas deferens is that the lumen is smaller as compared to the very thick wall and the lumen is star shaped and as we will see it is lined by pseudo certified columnar epithelium and the thick muscular wall 
thick muscularis of the wall is disposed in three layers inner longitudinal then a circular layer then outer longitudinal layer and outermost layer is a thin, uh, thin layer of connective tissue which is called adventitia so mucosa muscularis and adventitia mucosa consists of pseudo stratified columnar epithelium under which is present a small amount of connective tissue which is called lamina propria and outer to lamina propria then we have this thick very thick three layered muscularis if you look at the diagram b <clears throat> it is a high power diagram it is a tall columnar cells and basal cells of the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium lining the uh, mucosa of ductus deferens and the tall columnar cells as you can see they bear stereocilia tufts of stereocilia can be seen at their free surface this i have told you muscularis is very thick and consists of three layers inner longitudinal middle circular and outer longitudinal and why is it very thick why very thick muscle is present in the ductus deferens because the spermatozoa and the associated fluid which are, which are stored in the ductus deferens they are thrown with the force by the forceful contractions of muscle of the uh, ductus deferens into the prostatic urethra through the ejaculatory duct where it mixes with the product of the accessory glands of the male genital system mainly the prostate and the seminal vesicles to form the semen so that is why uh, very thick muscularis present muscularis present and this thick muscularis uh, contacts in a peristaltic Uh, by uh, peristaltic contractions at the time of ejaculation and throws the contents of the ductus deferens into the prostatic urethra through the ejaculatory duct outer to the muscularis of course a layer of connective tissue is present which is called adventitia and adventitia contains the blood vessels nerves uh, lymphatic vessels etc of the vas deferens then ejaculatory duct the thing special when uh, where the ductus deferens joins the duct of uh, seminal vesicle uh, uh, that and then it becomes the uh, ejaculatory duct and uh, it is a very small duct which pierces the <clears throat> prostate gland and opens into the prostatic urethra and the lining of this duct is also pseudo stratified columna so once again i will remind you that the lining of the Uh, male genital ducts lining epithelium of the typical lining epithelium or the ident- most identifying feature of the male genital ducts is their lining epithelium and they are lined by pseudo stratified columnar epithelium uh, on the tall columnar cells of which in the in the high power you can also see the st- 